Hello. Okay, we'll start the subject itself, right? And the uh, last session, uh, we have covered up to multiplication, right? Multiplication will continue from there onwards, right? So here are the instructions we have seen it, right? So for the multiplication instructions or the multiply instructions, there are uh, some instructions, like there are two kinds of uh, multiply instructions we have it. One is uh, the long instruction, long multiply instruction and uh, simply multiply instructions. Look at this one. Uh, these are all the, the instructions which are meant for the smaller uh, multiplications, right? So if the uh, multiply the result multiplication result doesn't uh, go beyond uh, 32 bits right then you can store the result into into only one register that is what exactly what you have for the multiplication multiplication and accumulate accumulate and only multiplication right and here the rm and r or rs will be multiplied and the result will be stored into rd so here all the three registers yeah. are 32 bits in length right rd rm and rs they are 32 bits in length so the uh, even after the multiplication of rm and R, rs or the contents of rm and rs the result is 32 bits that's why uh, it is recorded as a rs can you switch off your mics hello can you switch off your mics all of you can you switch off or uh, mute your mics can you hear me? hello this is what uh, uh, this is what the uh, things you have what you have that is uh, multiply and equal to rm into rs plus rm and there is another instruction called as a multiply which is going to multiply these two instructions right so there is a carry here that is rm sorry uh, rm the contents of rn is multiplied with rs and there is something what is a, the contents of rm you get added and rd is going to store it into destination the only thing is that all these four registers are 32 bit in length and the result also is 32 bits in, in length and there is something called as a uh, long multiplications, right? So where uh, the multi the result of the multiplication goes beyond 32 bits, right? If the result of the multiplication goes beyond 32 bits, then you cannot fit it into 32 bit register. So what you do is that we have something called as addition, right? What you do is that we are storing low order bits in one register and the high order bits in another 32 bit register, right? There are few instructions we have that is a sim, uh, small multiplication, small multiplication, that is a sign multiply accumulate uh, long and sign multiply long and unsigned multiply accumulate long. Right? So in this case, what happens in the sign multiply accumulate long in the sense that here we are dealing with a sign number, right? We have sign number and multiplying those sign numbers and the result will go into two registers right and each register is of length 32 bits right and uh, the first 32 bits will be considered as the low order bits and the next 32 bits will be considered as the high order bits right and the low order low order 32 bits will go to one register and the high order 32 bits will go to another register, right and <clears throat> here something known as a sign multiply long right so sign multiply long so it's very similar to uh, the one and that is unsigned multiply accumulate long that is there is a sign here right we have unsigned numbers and we are multiplying it again now uh, the result will go to uh, two uh, 32 bit registers one register 
will be considered uh, is is holding uh, lower order 32 bits when the the next register will hold higher order 32 bits and similarly we have one more uh, instruction called as umul uh, which is uh, going to multiply uh, two long integer numbers right but there is no accumulation here there is no accumulation and here is one example of the the multiplication so we have seen it in the class right that is pre uh, pre uh, before execution and the after execution that is a precondition and the the preconditions the precondition states that r1 will have zero and sorry r0 will have zero and r1 will have two and r2 will also have two right after multiplication what happens so r0 will have four r1 still holds two and r2 still holds two so that means multiplication of r1 and r2 r1 is two and r2 is also two and the multiplication of these two get it will, it will be uh, stored into a 32 bit register and here uh, r1 and r2 is 32 bits in length and the result is also within the range of the 32 bits that's why it goes to r1 we don't need uh, accumulation <coughs> we don't need uh, accumulation that's why we we'll, you we are using single register that is called as a rm register, <laughs> register. and here is one more uh, example of the assigned uh, multiplication right so we have two registers sorry uh, four register r not r1 r2 and r3 so what are you doing is that r2 and r2 will get multiplied and the result will go to r not and r1 what that r1 will hold the lower order uh, 32 bits and r R0 higher order 32. Hello, R0 sorry, R1 will hold uh, higher order 32 bits and R0 will hold uh, lower order 32 bits. So that is exactly what we have after after multiplication we have the four, which is lower order for 32 bits, and um, uh, this one will uh, have the higher order 32 bits. Only thing is that. Even though we have the result is within 30 bits, uh, only to demonstrate the the usage of the application, we have that is human find multiplication long. So what you have to do R naught and R1 is used to put the the result of an arithmetic sorry multiplication operations, right? And where uh, we are multiplying the contents of R2 and R2 and the result will go to R0 and R1 where R0 will hold the, the lower order of 32 bits and R1 will hold the higher order of 32 bits and the next one comes the branch instructions right so a branch instruction changes the flow of execution or used to call a routine right so in case of um, either it may be an assembly level language which is like or in any high level programming languages what you are doing is that you have to change the flow of execution that is your execution control should transfer from one uh, point of the program to another the point of the program or another description that is called as the the flow of execution we we generally call it as the the flow of execution or it, it's called it is basically used to call a subroutine or a routine there are few branch instructions which is uh, going to change the flow of the execution the first one is a v followed by the condition and a label label is nothing but the uh, the label of the label of the instruction the first executable instruction uh, from where the execution has to start and the the bl condition followed by the label branch with the written value and followed by a label and branch exchange with the contents of a register with the contents of a register and the bl with exchange with the link label or it may be a contents of a register it may be a content of a register let us look at this table you can easily understand it so what is that the first one is a branch which is nothing but pc is equal to label pc is equal to label 
right which is nothing but the program counter will have the address of the label that is from where the execution has to start it the execution has to start ammi here is all like uh, look at the first instruction right first one there is a branch the pc that is a program counter will have the address of a label where the execution will start from this label and there is something called as a branch with a link right the pc will again have the address of a label but there is something called as a lr that is address of the next instruction after the the bl that is a written uh, the link written right i wear after execution of the instruction in the label the execution control has to come back to the the instruction right that address has been stored in the lr right so that is the address of the next instruction after the the bl and there is something called as a branch exchange the pc will have a contents of a register right the a register contains the address a register contains address of a jump instruction and which is stuck with or which is what you call it as uh, added with the e then t is added with the contents of rm and the t and similarly for a branch exchange with the link the pc will again have the address of a label or it can have an the contents of a label uh, sorry contents of an address is considered as a, uh, it, it is loaded into pc register and in case of a label the t is set to 1 and in case of the contents of a register what you are doing is that you are uh, we are masking it we, we actually call it as masking right rm and 0x that is uh, ff 7f and e which is nothing but masking right and whatever the mask value we have that is nothing but the the jump address and t is equal to the contents of the register rm and one which is added with one and lr still have the address of the next instruction after the the blx so these are the four branch instruction that is the bl with the label bl with the label and bx and the contents of a register blx with the label and a or or a register register contents it is so look at this one the forward branch instruction how the forward branch instruction happens so we have few more instructions here let us assume that we have few more a few instructions here before this this uh, this one that is a b forward so what you are doing is that so once the b forward instruction appears here your execution control will be transferred here right that is forward it's a label so forward is called as the the label and from this point onwards it will start executing it what is that you have something called as subtract r2 with r4 sorry r2 with an immediate value 4 and whatever the result you have it will be stored into r1 right once it is done once it is done your execution control has to be uh, sorry execution control has to come back to at this point that is add r1 comma r2 comma hash of 4 that is the the immediate value so now so this is a forward instruction or the the forward branch that is your execution control will be transferred forward or in a like to the the next instruction right this is called as the forward branch there is something called as a backward branch in other words you have declared a label or you have put a label before this one and you are jumping or your execution control will, uh, will be transferred in a backward direction so look at this one this is a label backward is a label here are set of instruction that is add r1 comma r2 comma hash of 4 subtract r1 comma r2 comma hash of 4 add r4 r6 and r7 then once it is done you are moving back to 
or your execution control will move back to this one that is a move b backward what is that branch to backward what is a, what is that backward it's a label right backward is a label and your execution control will move back to backward now again it executes these two instruction again ex the execution control will move back to this one and thus it will get loop and actually what happens here uh, the entire assembly code enters into an infinite loop because there is no termination condition left. there is no termination condition so this is only to uh, demonstrate how the backward branch instruction happens how the uh, backward branch instruction happens here is one more example of the how the branch or the branch with a link right what is that bl subroutine that is branch with a link branch to subroutine your exhibition control will be transferred here here is the what you call it as the label it is something called as a label and corresponding to this protein we have it we are we are moving the contents of ll lr to pc register right what is that lr which is nothing but the return address and that address will be given to once it is done what i am doing is that my execution control will be transferred to compare r1 comma hash of it is get, that is compare r1 the contents of r1 will be get compared with the immediate value of 5 so move if equal right so the just i'm comparing r1 with the, if both are equal then i'm doing something else but whole point is that uh, the subroutine once you have the sub uh, subroutine the branch with the link we have we are moving the contents of lr to pc register that is you start executing the remaining instruction of the branch so there is something called as a next set of instruction we call it as a the load and store instructions these instructions are used for moving a single data item in and out of a register right you can either load a a value into a register or you can move a value to a memory location right these instructions are used for moving a, a single data item in and out of a register so ldr used for uh, loading the loading into a register and str is nothing but storing the value from a register into a memory location and here we have rd and addressing that is rd is nothing but the register and addressing this is what you call it as the branch or what you call it as addressing modes right what are you what what the kind of addressing modes you are using it so let us uh, look at the uh, things here we have ldr condition sb we will talk about all these things try to remember that ldr is meant for the loading value into the register and str is nothing but loading value from from a register into a memory location Look at this one LDR load word into a register. That is, a word is nothing but 32 bit address, right? Or a 32 bit value. Is it right? 32 bit value into a register. What, what is that? RD will be actually loaded a value at a given address. At a given address. What that contains? It contains a value of length 32 bits and it will be moved to RD. And similarly, you have something called as STR, save byte or word from a register. What I am doing is that I am moving 32 bit value from a given address into RD. Either it may be a word or it may be a byte, right? STR. And similarly, we can move a byte from into a register that is move that is 8 bit uh, value from a given address into a register. And you can move save a byte from a register into a memory location. You look at the directions here. You look at the direction. So it is move from uh, memory to into into a destination register. And here 
uh, it is moved from a destination register to a memory location. And this one, 32 bit in the sense that a 32 bit value will be loaded from a given address into memory, sorry, uh, into a register. And here, a 32 bit value will be moved from a destination register into a given address. Similarly, you can read this one, right? You are moving 8 bit value from a given address into a destination register. And in this case, we are moving a 8 bit value from a destination register into an address. Here are some other uh, instructions we have in LDRH that is load half world into a register. Half world in the sense that 16 bits, right? So what I am doing is that 16 bit value is moved from a given address into a, a destination register, right? Load half world into a register and str str h save half into a register you're moving 16 bit value from a destination register into a given address and similarly load signed byte into a register sign value will be a sign byte will be moved into a 8 bit at or a into a into a memory location and similarly load sign half for that is 16 bits uh, signed extended value will be moved into moved to a moved from a address into a destination register. These are the few uh, instructions which are basically used to load and store value either from a memory into a register or from a uh, register to a memory values. So this is what. And here is one example of the thing. Here what you have LDR R now comma r1 that is whatever the value you have at r1 which is nothing but the base address what you can consider it is and from this one whatever the value you have at this address right that will be get loaded into r0 load register r0 with the contents of the memory address pointed to by the register r1 right so r1 actually contains the address of a memory location it basically contains the address of a memory location and that value will be get loaded into R0. Similarly, what you have in this case, that is str R0 comma, the value at R1, that is R1, the register R1 actually contains the address of a memory location. So what I'm doing is that I'm storing the value of R0, R0 into value pointed by, into a memory location pointed by R1. Right, so and here the bracket indicates the contents of R1 is treated as the address. This is treated as a address. You look at this one, store the contents of register R0 to the memory address pointed to by register R1. Okay, so this is the application of uh, LDR and the SDR. LDR we have R0, R1, which is nothing but load the value, load the R load the value at a given address given by the like, given address by uh, st which is stored in 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 the contents of the document. similarly move the contents of r0 right to a memory location pointed by r and here is uh, something called as a single register load store addressing modes what are the different addressing modes we have it First one is a pre-index with the write back and the pre-index and the post index. The pre-index in the sense that uh, you are using the value of the base address and then you are calculating the or you are storing the, the value. Post index in the sense that you are first fetching the value, then you are writing it back. So look at this one. Pre-index with the write back, the memory, base address plus the offset whatever the offset value you have, that will be added to the base address. And what actually base address contains, register contains base plus the, the offset value, all right? So it will be written back to something called as the, the base address. So, but in this case, memory, base plus the offset, so it is not yet updated. It is only going to calculate the, the base address or the, uh, sorry, uh, the physical address using the offset, but the actual value will not be get updated. You look at the instructions here. That is the LDR, 
LDR or not comma R1 comma hash of 4 within the bracket then followed by exclamatory. This indicates it's it's a right back pre index with the right back that is R1 is a base address plus whatever the offset value or is the offset value the value will be get added let us take for example the base address is 0 and the offset value is 4 4 plus 0 it becomes 4 and whatever the value are having that will be retrieved then the value of r1 will be incremented or it will be updated now r1 initially it was 0 once the pre index with the right back indicates or execute it becomes 4 now because it's a right back instruction it's a right back instruction that is initially it was 0 plus 4 so now the address is physical address is 4 4 and then it will be written back to it will be written back to r1 right but in this case it is not get updated only just to work we're just calculating the we're just calculating the we're just calculating the the physical address that is r1 which is having the the four and for the post index we are just uh, first fetching the value then you are incrementing it first we are, we are calculating we are fetching the value at given address r1 then you are incrementing the value of r1 that is called as the post index here are some of the example with respect to the the pre index with the right back pre index pre index right so let us uh, see this example r not is having zero and R1 is having 9000 and the, the memory at an address code as 9000 is having the value code as 1010101 and memory at an address 9400 is having 0202002 right so this is what the data they have given it R1 is having 0 R1 sorry R0 is having 0 R1 is having 9000 and the value at memory location 9000 it is 1 sorry 1010101 and the value at 9004 it is having 2020202 now Now you look at this one, right? LDR R not comma R1 comma hash of four and which is right back pre-index right back it is. So pre-index with the right back. What I am doing is that R1 is having R1 is 9000, right? And what is the value at R1? It is one zero one zero one zero one. And that will be stored back into what R not now. Sorry, uh, R one comma uh, hash of four right before uh, fetching the value. What we are doing is that we are updating. Uh, sorry, we are changing the value of R one. R one was initially nine thousand plus four. It becomes nine thousand four. So what is the value at nine thousand four? That is two zero two zero two zero two, and two zero two zero two will be loaded into two now r1 has been updated to pre-indexing with the right back only pre-indexing what we have is that r0 comma r0 was what is that two zero two zero two zero two. so what i am doing is that i am fetching the value at r1 the so r1 plus four but the value of r1 is unchanged it is still r1 it is nine thousand but the value of r naught is has been 2020202 that is we are taking the value only from x1 comma uh, hash of 4 that is 20202 but we have not updated the value of we have not updated the value of r1 similarly for what is that post indexing we have something called as r1 r naught is initially like R1 is having uh, 
9000 right the value at 9000 is 101010 and that will be stored stored back into or not then the value of r1 is get updated it becomes r1 plus 4 which is nothing but 9004 right that is called as the the pre indexing as well as the the post indexing and the pre indexing with the write back and the post that's all right so we have seen it in the <coughs> data structure that is a pre increment post increment right so very similar to that one we have something called as a pre indexing with the write back pre indexing and the pre post indexing right the pre indexing what happens we are we are updating the value right as well as we are changing the contents of the base address as well but in the pre indexing we are getting the value but without changing the which is changing the contents of the base register here we are first uh, getting the value then we are updating the value of the base register that is what the uh, what you call it as the the post indexing and here are the some load and store instruction addressing more so we have it pre indexing with the immediate offset what you are doing is that it's a base register that is rn and hash that is the immediate value plus or minus offset plus or minus which is written in 12 bits right and similarly pre index with the register offset right so can rn which is nothing but the base register and offset value is taken from it's it's taken from a register which is called as the rm right either it may be a plus or minus and here plus or minus indicates that either you are moving forward or you are moving forward that is what we call it as a plus or minus plus in the sense that base register plus some value or the contents of a register means that you are your execution control is moving forward and minus in the sense that your execution control moving in a backward direction pre index with the scale register offset what is that a register plus or minus a contents of a register and a ship immediate value we are using it and the pre index right back with the immediate offset and similarly we have some all these things right so look at the right back these instructions these instructions these three instruction indicate right back instruction right which is given by the exclamatory indicates that it's a right back value or the right back instruction and similarly we have immediate post uh, index indexed that is rn plus or minus offset and post in register post index so, so that is for all the three three types of the addressing what you have we have three different values one either you can have only the offset which is an immediate value or you can have consider the uh, the contents of a register as so uh, con consider the uh, contents of a register as an offset or you can consider the contents of a register with the shift value as the offset value so therefore all these three uh, you have the same thing right and there is one more called as the multiple register transfer in the previous case what you have in this one we can move the contents from only one address to only one register right that is you are moving the moving from one register to or one address to one register but there are some other instructions which are basically used to move a memory value into multiple registers right multiple register transfer instructions so look at this one ldm that is load into multiple registers or store into multiple register and continue that is conditions and the addressing modes that is after or before we'll talk about that addressing modes and rn which is nothing but the the register register content and that will be moved to multiple registers we call it as a multiple registers right? the contents of one register will be moved to multiple registers look at this one ldm load multiple register rd rn that is that is multiple values will be moved to 
come on and the question into rd actually what happens this rn is nothing but the base register rn is nothing but the the base register if you and you consider it as a base register and move the move four byte values into eight register move four byte values into eight register first four bytes will be moved to the first register and the next four bytes will be moved to second register and the uh, next to the uh, third uh, three by four bytes will be moved to third register and so on right so that is exactly what you have right rdn 32 bit uh, uh, value will be moved to a register and similarly for rdn which is the new multiple register the contents of multiple registers will be moved to memory location will be moved to memory location that is all uh, the rn may be updated optional so there are some address modes here is something called as the address mode we have right address mode what is that address mode first one is the ia which is nothing but increment after right i v increment before d a increment after and decrement before what happens in the in increment after is that starting value is rn let us take uh, the contents of the register end of the six nothing but r plus four into n which is nothing but the register value number minus four that is that value will get stored into rn and similarly for increment before increment the value of rn increment the value of rn before its use that's why at the end of the result what you have rn plus 4 into n and at the end of all the iterations we have the the new base address that is rn plus 4 into n even in this case even of uh, increment before or increment after we have updated the base value or the base address by rn plus 4 into n so decrement after so before look, you are decrementing the value after that is rn minus 4 into n plus n right so n address is n that is for every iteration for every uh, operation what you are doing is that you are in decrementing the value of the base address right and look at this one even for the in decrement after or decrement before the value of the resistors has been decremented accordingly if you have n register let us take if you have four register so the value of rn will be decremented by that many number of times so look at this one here is one example of the things right example the memory at 80018 we have three 80014 we have two 80010 we have one these are the memory locations 32 bit memory locations and these are the value at these memory locations and memory 32 indic indicates it is a 32 bit uh, world this is also 32 bit world look at this one this is 32 bit and its address is 8010 which is a, which is in hexa values which is an hexa value and the value stored at this location is one and the next immediate word is 8014 and which is nothing but a distance of four bytes which is nothing but a one one and the value stored here is two and the value after this one we have one by one more distance which is nothing but 14 and 18 which is uh, the value stored at 18 is three and uh, look at the contents here or not is having 8010 right and r1 is 0 and r2 is 0 and r3 is 0 what i am doing is that i am loading i am loading the value multiple values into resistors called as r1 r13 r1 2 r3 so here to specify range of resistors we are using a hyphen we are using a keyword hyphen that is it is nothing but r1 r2 and r3 and here r3 is the base address r3 is the base address and write it back write it back the the values so load multiple and look at this one 
increment after increment after it right so first one r naught r what is the value of the r naught 8010 so what we will do is that we are fetching the value first we are fetching, fetching the value at 10 10 is having value 1 and that is go, going it is going to r1 it's go to r1 and then what i am doing is that the value of r0 will be incremented by 4 now r r0 r0 is having 4 right so what is at 8 80014 it is 2 that will go to the second resistor what is that it is r2 r2 is having 2 now and similarly at uh, simultaneously what i am doing is that the value of the r0 is incremented by 4 more times it contains 8 18 right it was initially 14 14 plus 4 it becomes 18 and what is the value at 18 it is r3 Sorry, uh, uh, what is the value at 18 it is 3 that will be loaded into 3 that it will be loaded into 3 and what about r naught it is it contains the next available address what is the next available address it is 1c it is 1c right so let us look at this one how the the precondition works for the LDA, LDM I. So R0 is equal to 0x 8001 and R1 will be loaded with 00, 0 initial. Initial condition is all these things, right? So once it is done, once the all these instructions get executed, once all these instructions get executed, what happens? R1 will have 1 r2 will have 2 and r3 will have 3 whereas r0 will have the next available world what is that 8001c 8001c initially r0 r1 r2 and r3 will have 0 and r0 will have the base address that is 800 10 800 and after executing this instruction that is ldm that is a load multiple uh, increment after instruction the contents of the registers r1 is r1 contains 1 r2 contains 2 and r3 contains 3 similarly r0 will have the next available address that is a 0 so for the load and store instructions that is a post increment here what is that uh, before loading the things 8000 8010 is was there right so before fetching the value what i'm doing is that and I'm, <coughs> I'm incrementing the value of the or not it becomes 14 right so value at 14 is 2 so that will be loaded into r2 sorry uh, 2 uh, sorry r1 r1 will have the value 2 so then we'll increment the value of r not again it becomes 18 so value at r on uh, 18 it is 3 that will be loaded into r2 and again it will be incremented by one more four sorry one more one so it becomes one c value at one c it is four and that will be loaded into four. that is the difference between pre-increment and the the post uh, increments right so here honor steel is uh, eight thousand eight double zero one c but the value of r1 r2 and r3 has been changed here initially it was like so for the post uh, precondition it was uh, sorry post condition it was one two three but look at this one you have incremented afterwards that's why you have two three and four all right so this is a load and multiple space when base update used we, these are the uh, different uh, load and store instructions stm ie stm iv that is a store multiple <coughs> increment after store multiple increment before decrement after and decrement before similarly it was good for the load multiple as well so here is one example of the uh, things right r1 is having 9000 r sorry r0 is having 9000 and R0 is having 9000 and R1 is having 9 and R2 is having uh, 8 and R3 is having 7. What I am doing is that I am storing the value beginning at an address R0 uh, 
the value of all these three registers that is R1, R2, and R3, right? It's a range. And these are the instructions followed by that. I move R1 with one, R2 with two, and R3 with three. That what is that? So for the precondition, what I am having is that after executing this instruction, that is STMIB, the R0 will have, actually have 9000, 9, uh, 9 whereas R1 will have one, and R2 will have two, and R3 will have three. R3 will have three. And so uh, that is exactly what you have for the STM, right? So before uh, before updating the value, and in this case, in this case, STM IB in the sense that we are uh, storing the value of these register contents. That is R1, R2, and R3. What what you have? R1 is having nine, eight, and seven. That will go to memory locations. That will be stored into a memory locations. And here is one one more instruction that is LDMDA that is a load multiple uh, half bytes half half words after right that is uh, beginning at an address R zero from an address or into a register called uh, from uh, in range called as R one to R three. Look at this one. After successful execution of this one, we are rolling back it. Initially, it was R1 is 1, R2 is 2, and R3 is 3. And after execution of this one, we are rolling it back. R1, R0 is having 9000, R1, 9, R2, 8, and R3, 9, 7. Right? So that is uh, all for the today's class.